In this episode of TWIP Talks, I sit down with equine photographers Gigi Imbrix and Peter DeMott. We talk about sort of the genre of equine photography and some of the similarities between equine photography and some more traditional types of photography. Also, some tips and techniques that you can use if you are interested in this kind of photography to uh, to get better shots and also some of the business sides of things, how to make money doing this and what some other photographers are making doing equine photography. Really good interview. Give it a listen. All right, welcome Peter and Gigi to Twip Talks and this week in photo. It's good to have you guys on. Thanks for uh, taking the time to do this interview today. Well, thanks. thanks for having us. This is this is really exciting for us. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, let's let's kick this off with uh, Gigi. Let's. Uh, I want to get a little bit of background on you, and and then we're obviously going to dive into equine photography and reveal what all that's about for the folks that may not have heard of that. So Gigi, give us a little background on you and, and why you enjoy this, this genre of photography. Well, I, I started doing photography um, pretty much right when the digital cameras started to come out. Before that, I tried it and it was I didn't want to go to the dark room. And at that time, I lived in Montana and I, was, I started taking pictures of the ranch horses where we worked. Um, after that, my husband is from Belgium, and we moved back to Bel to well, he moved back to Belgium. I dragged along, and um, I got involved in uh, documenting the draft horse in the way they are here, and I've been photographing horses ever since. So yeah. about ten years now, and wow. I've I've always have always had horses and showed horses, so it was a natural interest to just start photographing horses. Love it, love it. And Peter, what about you? Well, welcome to the show, obviously. But tell us, tell us a little bit about your background in doing this genre of photography. Well, um, I've been taking pictures since I was twelve, so and I'm almost sixty. So uh, I've been through a lot of different cameras and through the film, and then switched over to digital. But uh, basically, I got into horses when I married my wife thirty years ago. Well, so congratulations. Yeah, and, uh, you know, so I've been taking pictures of horses, and then I got involved in something called the Equine Photographers Network, which was an online uh, discussion group type thing mm -hmm. about 15 years ago. Yeah. And learned from some top photographers around the world about the best way to take pictures of horses. Wow. So now what I do is I do senior portraits with horses and I do some equine events. But uh, the challenge for me, I, I love portraits, and uh, the challenge for me is to get the horse right and to get the person right. So, you know, there's a lot of portrait photographers take a picture of a person with their horse and the horse looks awful because they don't know how the horse is supposed to look. Yeah. But uh, with a little training, you learn about that. All right, so Gigi, when you and I first talked a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned something like that too about how you have to know how to photograph a horse in order to make the horse look good. Yes. From a layperson's perspective, I mean, I could probably count the times that I've actually even touched a horse on one hand, right? So, from a from a layperson's perspective, you know, we a layperson like me would say a horse is a horse, of course, of course, right? So. <laughs> You know, you know, so how? what's a bad photo of a horse? How can you make a horse look good? These are some majestic, or how do you make it look good, or how do you make it look bad? They're kind of majestic regardless, right? Yeah, they are. The problem comes in is the camera. You need a vocal length of over 100 millimeters. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it distorts their body because the, you'll see pictures of horses. Their heads are real big. And then the back end is real small, and that has to do with the camera, the, the lens, or the cam, like an iPhone camera, or a, a lens, say like a, a 35 millimeter, is going to totally distort the horse. Yeah. And there's where you have to have most it's of us use a 200 or a 70 to 200 millimeter lens um, to photograph horses. 
So it's kind of like with people, right? It's the same way. If you if uh, you photograph a model with a 15 mil lens, unless you're going for a specific distorted effect, then yeah. she's gonna have a giant head and a tiny body, right? And the horses' heads are really big, so it really gets distorted. <laughs> uh, yeah, Peter, That's Peter, you're gonna say something. Say horse, horses are large, larger than models. So instead of just having a big nose, they have a big, big nose. And a tiny little teeny weeny butt about six feet away from there. Uh, so uh, that makes the horse not look proportional to what a real horse looks like. And people that spend thousands and you know twenty thousand dollars on a horse don't want it to look like the the puppy dog calendar with the big noses. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, this is a large animal, right? So. I'm sure there are many, many precautions and standard operating procedures that you need to follow when interacting with these kind of animals. From a photographer's standpoint, putting myself in this situation, if I was out there and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, I'm in the stable and I want to get some great shots of horses and I heard what Gigi and Peter said and I'm going to use my lens, the right lens and all that, what other things do I need to keep in mind to not, not get either to not spook the horse or to not get trampled or, you know, to traumatize the horse. What, what do you, what are the rules of thumb to keep in mind? Well, you know, if you're, if you're shooting at 200 millimeters, you're going to be 20 to 30 feet back from that horse already. Yeah. So, uh, those dangers are not there, but the thing that most of the equine photographers do is whoever is handling the horse needs to be cognizant of how the horse is behaving. And if the horse is upset about something, then, you know, or if the trainer or owner is not comfortable doing something with the horse that you ask it to ask them to do, you, you kind of have to be cognizant of that. Yeah. You know, you don't want them to do something like, let's get on a horse with a wedding dress that's never seen a wedding dress. Yeah. Right, you right. And, and then they go galloping off and fall in a mud puddle somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Which could make for some interesting photography, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> especially if you have that long lens on there, you're good. Yeah, yeah. you get it all. <laughs> you get it all. Gigi, what about you? Any thoughts on that? Like, well, you know, I, just... think, I think if you really, you know, it, an occasional taking a picture of a horse because they're beautiful is okay, but if you really want to be a, an equine photographer, it's really good to know horse behavior so you can read, you know, they speak with their ears, they speak with their body language. And if it, most photographers that do this have been around horses first or all their life, and then they pick up the camera to photograph them. So we know, we know about horses, we know about them, you know, they're, they're, how they act at certain situations. We know how to read when they're going to be taken off before they take off, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, especially if you've ridden them before you, you get to know them as an animal. Um, but what about, what about the folks that are listening to this? They're like, wow, I had no idea that was a genre of photography. I want to start photographing horses, but they don't have the benefit of that long years of experiences, you know, shooting horses and being around them. What should they do? Or should they steer away or, or shadow someone like one of you guys first before they, you know, dive in and go solo? I think if they could, I'm sorry, Peter. I think if they could spend time around horses and get comfortable with them would be the first thing, you know, and, and, and then once they, see how they move and see how they act. I think then they'll be a little more comfortable around them. You need to be comfortable around them or they'll pick that up, you know, that you're not comfortable and then you'll have a problem. But I think, you know, and then, and then it would be a good a, a idea to hang out with someone who's photographed them before or knows horses. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, you have anything to add to that? Well, yeah, there's lots of workshops you can go to about it, but, you know, she said that a lot of the equine photographers, a lot of them are women and have grown up with horses. But a lot of the men in equine photography came to eat photography first and then the horse later. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, you know, we're doing this podcast on equine photography and we talk to the people, you know, what came first, the camera or the horse, you know. <laughs> And we have that conversation, and we find out how they got involved with photography and horses together. Yeah, you know, so that's kind of fun. But 
I came to horses through my wife. Gigi, you know, has been around horses since she was a small child. So yeah. I, I've learned different things. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I've always been, I remember, I've only been on a horse, I think, twice or so in my life, uh, once as a kid. And I remember both times the experience, and maybe it was because I was a kid, you know, uh, but I remember it being a little, a, a, I was going to say a little frightening, but it was a lot frightening to be on this <laughs> this giant thing that, that, you know, was probably smarter than me and more powerful than me. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, it's 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 interesting. Uh, and Peter, I wanted to dive down before we started recording. You were telling me a little bit about how niched down this genre of photography can get. When I sp when I initially spoke with Gigi, I was surprised to to know that there was even a such thing as uh, as equine photography. And in speaking to you guys, I know now that it, there are there are several spectrum of or spectra of of this genre of photography, you can niche down very narrowly. Peter, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. I mean, uh, I had just mentioned to you that there's a couple of world famous uh, Arab horse photographers that travel from Italy and all over the country, uh, and they only photograph Arab stallions wow. and uh, for these huge breeding farms. Uh, but just think about where you see horses. There's rodeos, and then there's Western pleasure show riding. Um, my wife is involved in a sport called endurance riding, where they do 25, 50, or 100 miles in just one day, uh, riding horses. Mm -hmm. and, and then Gigi ha is involved in the draft horses, which is the huge, you know, really big horses. Yeah. Big yeah, heavy like the work horses. horse. Yeah. Um, on Monday, I'm doing a, a, a mini horse shoot. And the thing about each of these venues is you need to know what the ideal picture is. Because uh, like at a Western Pleasure Show, they want the horse's head at a certain level. They want a certain place in the trot that you capture the image. But then if you go to like the walking horse shows, they want uh, their camera cockeyed and slanted so mm -hmm. it looks like the horse is running uphill and, you know, all these weird things. And then stallion, uh, you know, uh, Arab stallions, they're looking for the dish in the nose yeah. and a very beautiful head. That's I mean, interesting. A lot of this sounds, as I listen to you guys talk, it sounds suspiciously like wedding photography in a lot of ways, <laughs> where there, there are different kinds of weddings and different kinds of oh, brides sure. and grooms, you know, and nationalities like that require, yeah, they all require, they all have their own different needs and the different right. ways of approaching the the event right this is this is very similar in in right. a lot of ways but on that with wedding photography especially the folks that are listening to this Gigi I want to have you chime in on this with the folks that are listening to this most folks are familiar with at least or have a general understanding of uh, pricing or the business side of wedding photography you know and the different the different steps in the flow chart that photographers need to go to then there's you know the uh, you know, portrait photography and seniors' portraits and all that stuff. Those businesses are relatively known. How does the business side of things work with with equine photography? And I know that's a major focus of your podcast too, right? Yes, it is, and it it varies. There, like a wedding, you know, a wedding is a wedding, and but with equine photography, we it really varies quite a bit on which way you go like I do the draft horses and so I do more uh, documentary and editorial about that and then mm -hmm. I do fine art where like Peter does more portraits and s with seniors who have horses so it's it's such a variety that you can go into there's you know like he said events and uh, so the business you have to kind of work your business around the genre that you've picked to go into, yeah. um, and and that's what we talk about on our podcast is we try to get all these 
um, professionals that ha have been doing wild horse photography. You know, they do. Um, you know, there, there's just a, such a big variety that each and each business is a little different, and it's yeah. how it works. So that's what we try to cover. Peter, but, um, Peter, how how would you chime in on that? The business side of well, things. Yeah, it, and just like she said, it's there's a lot of different. Uh, ways to look at it. Like if you think of a nature photographer, they're trying to sell, and maybe they put together a book and sell it. Mm -hmm. And that would be the same way with some of our uh, wild horse and, and art photographers. They're trying to sell uh, publications or they have, they go to galleries and have art shows. Yeah. Um, I just heard about a photographer in New York that's doing um, portraits of horses for the very, very, very high-end client, and he is uh, compositing 30 or 40 images into one portrait just to get everything perfect so he can make a, you know, three-foot by nine-foot mural canvas print for their home. I mean, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so something like that. So that's a top end of the spectrum. Right. I gotta ask. I know people are wondering, what do you charge for something like that? You know, at the well, high I, I end. He was talking about um, his sessions were nine thousand dollars and above. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. That's the so very I, top end. Most of us are horse poor. Yeah, most of us you are know, starving here. No. <laughs> We're not in the heart of Texas, and we're not in L.A. and New York where, they, where there's lots of money. But, uh, you know, you have people that have their barnyard horse, and they want a portrait with it. That's a different thing. Now, that if you think about uh, show photography, uh, horse show photography, think about, let's say, a gymnastic event, and you have hundreds of participants, and you're trying to sell small packages of 29, 59, you know, stuff like that, but you have so many people there. Yeah. So it's a whole different way of setting up your profits. It's like event, yeah. event photography in many ways, right? Yeah, so, right. exactly. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's event photography, and those kind of mechanics work the same way. That's, that's interesting, except for when you go ultra high end and you're, you're charging right. nine grand. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, you know, we have the... Uh, the people coming in at the bottom too, just like the wedding photography people and the portrait people, there's people that are coming into equine photography and, and going to a farm and spending three hours and giving somebody a disc with 150 pictures for $50, you know, mm. right. you know, that kind of stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. Same problem in the wedding industry, right? Exactly. People that go out and shoot weddings and say the shoot, the shoot and burn Photographers that go out there and shoot the wedding for a couple hundred dollars and give give them the disc of JPEGs or raw images and say have at it. Now, where do where do you guys fall in? Like, uh, Gigi, on your side, give us like a day in the life of Gigi when you're when you're in equine photographer mode. Okay, well, I I'm quite a little different than most because well, I live two, I live six months in Belgium and six months in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to do any, you know, lo build a, a, a local business like mm -hmm. portraits, you know, in your area. So I've kind of gone to um, writing articles. I go when I'm in Belgium in the spring, in the fall, they do um, plowing events, the workhorses, they do logging. They, you know, I go and kind of photograph them. Um, mm -hmm. I sell the images some to some of those people, but. They're farmers mostly, <laughs> and they're not going to spend a lot. Where I make my money on that is um, I write articles. Um, I'll sell oh, I'll turn them in to find art prints and then, you know, do galleries for that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of. about the fishing thing. Oh, yeah. I had. Um, and then I do tours too. Well, I, um, there's the horse fishermen, and they take draft horses out into this North Sea here in Belgium. And drag for shrimp, so I did a st whole story on those. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. it was really, it was really, and it was a, it, it got a lot of coverage, and um, I've had a couple other horse um, 
oh, uh, websites and magazines that have bought, licensed the image so they can write the stories too. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of do like, you know, kind of tell stories with my pictures and then do art, fine art with them. Photojournalism and fine art. Peter, yeah. Peter, what about you? What's a, what's a day in the life? Well, I, I go between events and portraits. So my, I, I do all the events where my wife is participating in the endurance riding. Mm -hmm. And I sell to the participants, and that's pretty low priced images. You know, mm -hmm. people are spending twenty-five to fifty dollars or whatever per person, uh, but only certain people do it. You know, buy the pictures. Of course. But, yeah. uh, then I do senior portraits um, and seniors portraits with horses. So you know, I'm looking for. Uh, you know, ideally something between five hundred and a thousand dollars per session. If I'm if I do really well. Yeah. So then, the on the on the back end to wrap all, all the kind of business side of it up, on the back end, what are you guys using? Each of you, Peter, we're gonna start with you. What are you using for the the sharing with the client? You know, or the proofing. Are you right. doing hard um, proofs? Are you doing soft proofs online, like Smug Mug or something like that? Yeah, I'm doing it. for the events. I'm doing the Smug Mug, um, but the only the reason that I use the Smug Mug is because um, I'm almost sixty, mm -hmm. and the best way for me to shoot an event like that is to shoot it in the morning and come back in the afternoon with pictures to sell on the spot. Oh wow! Okay, you know, and in terms of, uh, you know, sales, that's the best way to do it. And how are you doing those? I mean, if you shoot in the morning and come back in the afternoon, are you just, are you telling the folks, hey, go to this link and check out well, the gallery was, and find yourself in order? Or what's that? How do you get that? they horses all day long. Okay. So when I come back, they're coming in from their last loop, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, there's usually a banquet at these rides. And then I pass around books of pictures, but see, right now I'm just doing it on Smug Mug. So I'm sending, I'm giving them all my business card and saying, go to the the website and yeah. click on the link for your event. And then there's all these groups on Facebook, and I'll I'll send links to all the group, you know, the endurance groups that are out there. Mm -hmm. AERC endurance and endurance net and a couple other places where there's four or five, 6,000 riders and some of them were at my event. So yeah, you know. love it. Love it. Event, event photography and portraiture and all that. So let, let's wrap it up guys. So you, we kind of hinted a little bit at the fact that you guys are running a, an, an equine photography podcast. Gigi, right. why don't you give it to, or both you guys tell us, tell us about that. Why, why start that? What's it about? All that good stuff. Um, I kind of came up with the idea and I posted it in a forum that just to see if, um, you know, the equine people would be interested in a podcast because I listen to podcast. Well, I listen to yours all the time and I listen to lots of podcasts and I thought, boy, we don't have anything like that for our, for what we do. Mm -hmm. And then Peter saw that and said, I had kind of the same idea. So we kind of got together and decided that we would try this and, um, so we we haven't aired yet. We start. We're gonna let it go on in September. We're cool. just building right now, um, but it's really working out quite well. Um, we're learning a lot, and I think we're gonna have a lot of information for anyone who wants to learn how to take better horse pictures or may want to do this kind of you know uh, photography work. And it you know along with it, you can also it can be a you can do like Peter's portraits and horses. Um, a lot of people who have horses also have pets. So there's a lot, you know, ways you can take it. And we're trying to find all the different professionals to, to interview, to give people ideas and how to run a business and all that. So that's great. That's great. Well, like I was telling you before on the phone, be sure to don't, don't be shy about reaching out to me for tips and tricks on running a podcast. I've done a few episodes so far. I, I get <laughs> So, I guess I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peter, what about you? So you're you're now officially an equine photographer and a podcaster. How's that feel? That's good. I you know, 
I've enjoyed podcasts quite a bit, and I, like I was just mentioning to you, I had been listening to a lot of yours in years past. But uh, the thing that I think it's it's just a, a really I look at photography as an, a lifelong learning experience, and I think you look at the business of photography as a lifelong learning experience. So every time we do one of these interviews, it's like, oh my gosh, that one point, that was amazing. What a great idea. Welcome you know, to so my world. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> those are the things that we're doing, and we're, we're focusing on the business of photog equine photography, Mm -hmm. Not just how to take a pretty picture of a horse, but actually kind of digging in with these people and saying, okay, you know, you're a fine art photographer, you're shooting wild horses, what are your revenue streams? How does that work? And we ask them those questions too. So those are the kinds of questions that I've always wanted to know when I'm talking to other professional equine photographers and yeah. and every single time it's like, oh my gosh, I gotta write that down. Yeah. What a great yeah. idea. You know? Yeah, I found I found that those make the best interviews when you when you are genuinely interested and curious about what the interviewee is talking about, much like me interviewing you guys this time. So right. you know, I'm asking Asking questions that probably people like me that don't have a deep knowledge of equine photography are going to want to know because I want to know them. So yeah, yeah. It, it kind of works. Yeah, that's it, cool. It, it, you know, it's always been well, photography. It's it's getting easier to learn all different things, but it's it's nice to have these people share and and save you years <laughs> of trial and error. And that's what we're hoping that we can help people to you know come into the industry and and learn like we had to yeah wonderful yeah. all right guys well let's wrap this up where's uh where's a good place for the the listeners and watchers of this episode to go check out your work and connect with you well right now the uh the only thing up is the facebook page equine mm -hmm. photographers podcast and we are getting ready to open up our website which again is equine photographer uh, equinephotographerspodcast.com so uh, those two places uh, will get you to us and, and uh, individual websites too that's true so Gigi what's your website um, ggembricks.com and I'm you know it's the same for um, Twitter and Google Plus and Instagram and all of that so that's where I and Facebook Perfect. Uh, yeah. I'm Peter photos by P .com is my personal website. Perfect. All right. Well, I'll link to all of those in the post for this episode. Well, well, thank you. Thanks guys. Congratulations on everything you're doing. Keep up the good work and yeah, good luck with that podcast. I'm uh, I'll be subscribing and tuning in. Well, well, we really appreciate you, you know, talking to us about this because it, you know, it's kind of a, little niche in the in the world of photography and we're glad that anything we can do to you know get it out there so we yeah, really and that's that's what twip is all about is uh and that's like i think i was telling you Gigi, that's one of the reasons why i created the twip network uh was to kind of expose these th different genres of photography that people may not have known about and that i personally couldn't do justice on my own so this is yeah. it's great that you guys are doing this it's wonderful yeah great well, thank you, and we're learning a lot from you, and how, we, we really appreciate your talent now <laughs> in podcasting, <laughs> and how yeah. you interview, and it all goes so nice and smooth. We really can appreciate your talent in this. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, and uh, like I tell people, if I don't have it right after 427 episodes, there's oh, got to be something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't even imagine having that that number. It goes like that. Trust me. It goes pretty fast. Yeah. It goes really fast. All right, guys. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, good luck. And I'll see you on the internet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.